A massive thank you to Assassin Spoon, Fernando, Camille, Scott and Davis for subscribing to the channel. If you want to be featured in these little clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with round 11 of season 2 of our F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Apologies of course that there was no video yesterday from this series. We are today though back here ready for the Dutch Grand Prix on round 11 of the year. Of course a massive massive thank you as well for all the continued support on the channel. Obviously we hit 17k a couple of days ago. We're already well on our way to 18,000 subscribers as well. The, the growth has been absolutely phenomenal on the channel over the you know since F1 2021 uh, did release last month now. But of course if you aren't already make sure you get yourself subscribed as well. We've got plenty more F1 2021 content coming to you guys over the coming weeks and months. But heading though to the Dutch Grand Prix this weekend, don't think there's too many major things going on uh, sort of behind the scenes with the team. We have got a few R&D points uh, that we could potentially look at trying to use ready for this weekend. Don't think there's many more upgrades we want to do. Actually, big news I forgot to mention. Williams. Clearly, all those engine failures recently, they found something in that car and have now jumped Alpine, Alfa Romeo, Alfa Tauri and Haas to become now, what, the seventh best team in Formula 1? So we might see them actually within the points uh, points hunt in later on over the course of this year as well. So that's certainly going to be exciting to see from Williams. Now, we probably should mainly be looking at durability upgrades still at this stage of the year. So we're going to go with the energy store reliability testing. Can we go with anything else as well? I don't think so. 900 R&D points remaining. Uh, we'll go with the bearings upgrade as well then on the engine side of thing. They should both be ready for the Russian Grand Prix in a couple of weeks' time. Hopefully we'll get the fuel tank positioning sorted now, which we have. Okay, we've had the new parts come through the fabrication process. We'll have them with us for the next Grand Prix. Absolutely love that. Let's dive in here to Zanvor. Well, here we are then, back at the Dutch Grand Prix, here for Season 2 as well. The, I forget how loose the car gets through that final corner in low fuel mixture, in low fuel situations there. But, I'll be honest, first time I've been on F1 2021 in a few days, actually. I haven't had much chance to play the game since uh, probably in about four days. I think it's the first time I've jumped on. So, might be a little bit rusty early on this weekend. Definitely going to have to get through a lot of practice programs uh, to make sure we get back up to pace. But... Yeah, Zandvoort as well. Quite a difficult track. The AI very, very strong around here. Mainly because of this corner. Uh, they can take it almost flat out, whilst I definitely cannot. Uh, so yeah, we'll wait and see as to what happens with that over the course of the weekend. But yeah, we just need to try and get through our practice programs, earn some R&D, and look towards getting a good race set up. Right, well, we just about got the purple score on the uh, track climatization lap. Let's wait and see what we can do in the race simulation runs. Then you can definitely make up a lot of time in a few places. But like I said, that was it, turn 5, turn 6, I want to say. Very, very OP for the AI. Really, really struggling to find the balance of the car here in free practice. We're going to up the ride height, but yeah, unfortunately not many R&D points picked up. Let's dive into qualifying. Right, well here we are then, qualifying day for the Dutch Grand Prix, and fingers crossed the little setup tweaks I've made after free practice have helped us out that we just need a bit more stability through that final corner. So I think I'm running 8.10 on the ride height here. It's not particularly a quick, but it will mean hopefully we're not grounding out every time through there, which unfortunately led to our demise in last season's race, of course. One of three retirements we had last year. Of course, I think we've already had two this season, although one of them was at the very last lap of the Hungarian Grand Prix just a couple of races ago but yeah we'll wait and see what we can do this weekend hopefully at the very least q2 for both cars but not really too sure where we'll rank here at uh, the final corner yeah back end definitely so much better now with the up ride height it's going to be a 109.2 a bit off alonso and Sonoda. a long way off alonso actually uh I, I guess a respectable banker but nothing more than that Right, we've left ourselves a little bit of time, but hopefully this run is going to be the one that nestles us up into Q2. We need to find about another second, though, on our previous lap there. Schwartzman currently down on a 108.3. Let's just hope by being a bit braver through a lot of the twisty bits 
We can try and find that time there. A lot of slip out of the first corner. But we are green. That's what I like to see. Through turn three. Up the hill. That was pretty good traction as well. Ever so slightly down now as we head up through the S's, but fingers crossed. Yeah, we can just be a bit braver through the middle sector. Only down into sixth gear that time round. All getting very, very just up in the gravel trap there, but we got away with it. Avoid the bump on the inside. We have two laps of fuel remaining. Must admit, when you get Zanvor hooked up, it is quite a good fun lap there. Struggle to gel with it, though. As a track, I'll be honest with you guys. But as we head down in towards Sector 3, we're still only a couple of tenths up at the moment. So we do need to find a whole lot more time. And we, we're we just absolutely trying to get everything out of this thing. And it's just not happening so far in qualifying. We struggled for pace around here last year as well, if I remember correctly. Through the final corner. We're only going to find a tenth and a half. What's wrong with us? Well, as we get ready then for our final lap here in Q1, Bottas looks comfortably nestled up ready for Q2, but we need to just try and find absolutely everything on this final lap. At the moment, we need about a quarter of a second if we want to potentially make the cut. But we're probably going to need more than that here as we head on to this final run. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with us this weekend, though. I feel like I'm getting everything out of the car. Well, he was in seven tenths through the middle sector, which I think just goes to show how OP the AI are through that sector of corners. But fingers crossed we can do something here. We need to get through into Q2, surely, at the very least. We head through the end of Sector 2. That we're currently a tenth and a half up on our previous lap, so we need to just still be brave through here. Chuck it over the bumps. Let's just wait and see what we can do. Oh, as we just try and get over the lip there. We're two tenths up as we head in towards the final proper braking zone of the lap. Get on the throttle nice and early. That's been a nice run out of the final corner. Is it going to be enough, though, to see us through into Q2? It's going to be a three-tenth improvement. Is it going to be enough? P18. Yeah, I hate to see it. We just simply didn't have enough pace in qualifying there. Hopefully we've got a good race set up underneath us. Well, Charles Leclerc fastest at the end of Q1 there. And then you've got British 2-3-4 of Hamilton, Norris and George Russell there. So Aston Martin seemed to have made very good progress. Fourth and sixth at the end of Q1 there. We just miss out there by just under two tenths. But honestly, I felt like I was getting everything out of the car there. Bottas right in the mix as well, alongside Esteban Ocon and our teammate Schwartzman there. But like I said, fingers crossed we've got a good race car underneath us. Let's just dive in then to the Dutch Grand Prix. For years, the passionate Dutch fans have been easy to find trackside at races across Europe and throughout the world. Now at long last, they have a Grand Prix to call their own. It's a warm welcome once again to all of our viewers in the Netherlands and around the globe as we get underway for the Dutch Grand Prix. Zandvoort circuit, 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left, with plenty of steep camber and elevation changes to keep our drivers on their toes throughout a 2.6 mile lap. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Leclerc, Lando Norris and Sainz, Russell, Stroll, Perez and Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Bottas, Robert Schwartzman and Ocon, Joe, Giovinazzi, Mr. Monaco and Yuki Tsunoda, Latifi, Mazepin, Mick Schumacher and Christian Lungard. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. Right, well here we are then, on the grid, ready for the Dutch Grand Prix. Round 11 of the year here, and the team want us to do hard to soft. That that does not seem like a fun strategy for this Grand Prix. Uh, I want to try and do... Apparently I can't do anything. I want to try and do medium soft if possible, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, the team don't reckon they can do any more than that though. Uh, so we'll, we'll put it as medium hard. We'll try and extend the mediums as far as possible. If we can get to sort of lap 20, lap 21, uh, it might just be doable here as well. But of course, we'll wait and see about that. But yeah, 36 laps ahead of us though around this Zandvoort circuit. Overtaking can be rather difficult here. But we've got a car that we believe in over race trim. Whether that'll happen or not is a very, very different question. I'll say all this now. We'll get a mechanical failure on lap two. But let's dive in 
to the Dutch Grand Prix then. Round 11 of the year. Sonoda just behind us on softs. It's five red lights. And I accidentally have nailed that star. Um, I, my hand slipped. <laughs> my hand slipped off my upshift button there. And we've made up three places? Three places before turn one. I've accidentally nailed that. Bottas gets quiet on the curbing through turn two. We won't try and do anything stupid there, though. So actually get a warning for that around the outside of Bottas down the hill. That's given me a little bit more confidence here as we try... Love, love pressing the wrong button on the exit of the corner, but holy moly, what a start that was accidentally to the Dutch Grand Prix there as we fly up the hill. Yeah, like I said, just obviously with this wheel, you have to hold first gear in as Bottas is now instantly going to come back at us with that OP AI grip. Why well, have we got yellow flags? Who's got issues? Not too sure who that is as we thought about having a look. Giovinazzi's out. Car has just been deployed due to a build -up of debris on the track. What's happened to Gio? On and Ocon. Ocon. They've got a Oh, dearie me. So I'm guessing Ocon got caught out over the curbing on the exit of the corner there. And Giovinazzi, nowhere to go. Both of them just get taken out in that one instance there. And that is heartbreak for the pair from here. I think Ocon, yes, had to pull over afterwards. But Giovinazzi and Ocon out, and I had nothing to do with it. Genuinely quite surprised that wasn't a safety car, because it is lap one of this Grand Prix there. But Ocon and Giovinazzi both out of the cars, which is good to see. But yeah, down to 20 then already in this Dutch Grand Prix. And are we going to see more AI make that sort of mistake? We saw the carnage last week at Puon. But that's kind of helped us out as well a bit. Because the AI, of course, so OP through Sector 2 and so OP early on in the Grand Prix. They're not going to get that, well, as much of that advantage anymore. BSE ending, we're going green. Maintain positive delta until the green flags. Unfortunately, it looks like the VSC is going to come in just as the AI gets their OP bit again. So that's rather annoying. We'll see Bottas romp away, and I think, yeah, that's how the AI make that mistake. They just go a little bit wider than we saw there from Bottas. Clip the gravel, try and catch the save, and just fling themselves back in towards the racing line. At the final corner, though, getting a nice run on Valtteri Bottas. We'll be interested to see how that Williams stacks up now. DRS will be enabled this lap. You can use it when within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Because Bottas, yeah, could now be a threat to us towards the end of this season here. I mean, he won't be championship-wise. But it might be nice to battle the ex-Mercedes driver. Of course, almost a world champion last year. Don't think he'd... Ex well, I think, yeah, joining Williams is always a gamble. But I think he'd hoped for a bit more than this year so far has provided. Again, trying to get an another big run on Bottas. Holy moly. That was wheel spinny and slightly out the final corner. So even with all the changes, setup still not perfect. That dive bomb, though. Tiny bit of contact at the apex. As I think Bottas had to jump out of the way at the last moment. Sometimes you still got to send it. All over the back now of our teammate Robert Schwartzman in this Grand Prix. Of course, we are still on some softer, quicker rubber than the rest of the field early on here. Really not too sure actually what a lot of these guys outside of the top 10 are going for. I think they're probably trying to do the hard medium in this Grand Prix. But we should get to be able to get a run on our teammate back down towards town. Money goes a bit defensive. But we will get the nose to the inside there. Trying to get it slowed down towards the apex. Of course, contract renewal. After this Grand Prix, we are going to be keeping Schwartzman for the second half of the year. But, yeah, not really too sure what we should be looking for at the end of the year. A lot of you guys are a fan of Schwartzman in the car. But maybe, just maybe, it might be time for a fresh face as well. Definitely feel at this stage of the game as well, our team is just in such a weird little spot where some weekends, both Schwartzman and I, able to battle it out for decent points. And then others would sort of just that bit quicker than a lot of the back markers. But... Not seemingly as quick as the midfielders. It does tend to happen around sort of like the high downforce circuits, low top speed. But yeah, really, really weird. Obviously, like Hungary was probably a good example of that. Had we not gone with quite an unorthodox strategy, Schwartzman and I would have basically been in no man's land all weekend. Just, yeah, still stuck in this middle ground. Check your MFD for a new strategy option. Well, what do we reckon the team are recommending then? Anything good or anything useless? Oh, they're actually being helpful. So they reckon lap 23 onto the softs. We might go a couple earlier than that, but it's reassuring they think it's doable. Oh, there we go. First AI into the pits as well at the end of lap 11. So Perez and Straw now both going on to hard tyres. So definitely the AI from qualifying sets can do 11, 12 laps at the very least. So maybe sort of, yeah, 14 might be doable. 14, 15. Oh, we got more yellow flags out. I think it's one of the Haas cars. Is it Mazepin or is it Schumacher? It's Mazepin! So we don't care. 
Low more AI into the pits as well at the end of the next lap. We're not even going to get close to most of them. The top ten now. Keep it up. Where is the one that's just heading back out? Oh, we have got ahead of the Aston Martins at the very least. You can see, yeah, behind Leclerc and Ricardo. So definitely struggling this weekend. Normally we'd be able to get in the mix with these guys and kind of upset them. But not here. I'll tell you one thing, Gasly and Alonso are doing a good job holding up this train for us. Of course, the AI, yeah, really struggled to overtake around here. As I think we'll see in real life in, hopefully, We're uh, only, what, five, three, four, four weeks time? Three seconds. I forgot Zandvoort's going to be really soon now. That's that's kind of made me feel a bit excited for this real race. But, well, I mean, it's, it probably won't be that dramatic because it will be so difficult to overtake at. But, yeah, we're closing on the Ferraris. Well, the last few laps, we've really just been trying to stay in the groove with these tyres, trying to nurse them towards the pit window. They do seem to be hanging on in quite nicely at this stage of the Grand Prix. Kind of a little bit looser and looser every lap through that corner, but Stroll is slowly closing in, but not really pressurising us all too much. Not really too Lots sure where we're going to re-emerge. Yeah, really not too sure where we're going to be in this Grand Prix, and probably be just a few laps to go. Back end is just getting a bit looser and looser lap after lap. The pit window. You'll be on the soft. Oh, we've got yellow flags out. I think that's Perez going slowly behind us. The Schwarzman dives it into the pit lane there. I think Perez here has had an engine failure. Let's go double check. Riding on board then with Sergio out of the final corner. Second engine failure of the year, perhaps. Yeah, that's just gone up in smoke, hasn't it? Heartbreak for Sergio Perez there, but I'm sure the team almost... Well, not happy that it's happened to him and not Max Verstappen. But I'm sure they would have been much more gutted had it, yeah, happened to his teammate. Car ahead is a second a lap faster than you. Gap to teammate behind is 21.2 seconds. Yeah, tyres have now definitely hit the cliff over the last lap. We're going to box in the end of this one, just let the team know. This lap then. Come into the pit at the end of this lap. Stroll, you, you can't dive there, buddy. I, I appreciate the attempt, but yeah, that, that's not happening. Stroll definitely getting fed up now, being stuck behind. This is his teammate, George Russell. Looms in his mirrors as well. They were causing an Aston Martin train at this stage of the day. But yeah, we'll, we'll box in now and try and get a set of softs to the end. Through the final couple of corners, of course, Zandvoort, a bit like uh, Baku. You've got to be really, really brave on pit lane entry. Try and get as close to that inside wall as possible. A slam on the anchors. There we go. Nice and tidy there. Not as brave as Baku, I'll be honest. But yeah, team happy with us in now. We should come out between Sonoda and Schwartzman, if I'm not mistaken. Don't think we'll quite get the jump on the Mercedes. Come on. Go, go, go. Thank you. But we'll be doing one more oh, stop are we going to stay ahead of Sonoda? You fastest lap from the young Japanese driver there in his Merc. But yeah, we are. We're going to hold on ahead of Sonoda in this Grand Prix. So we're now 15 seconds behind George Russell there. We have only lost the two spots. Sonoda then tries to get really, really feisty. Can we close up this gap by the end of the Grand Prix, though? That's the real question. Yeah, we need to be taking about a second a lap out of Russell if we want to try and get okay, points. Gap ahead is 13.7 seconds. Would be nice if we can try and sneak fast lap as well as well there. Of course, and now a 1098 from Sonoda behind. But yeah, just got to try and push, but don't take everything out of this rubber either. Quick but careful. Oh, Gasly and Alonso into the pit, so it's going to give us another two cars to chase, of course, in this Grand Prix. Trying to avoid the back end stepping out. Yeah, of course, they're going to be going very, very quick towards the end as well. So there might be an opportunity here as we just miss out on fastest lap, I think. Yeah, these two have come out four seconds up the road. Not sure we're going to be any quicker than them, though. Yeah, not sure realistically. Oh. I've already told the team I'm not pitting again. Yeah, not sure realistically that we're going to be able to get much more out of this. Alonso and Gazzi still pulling away from us. Unless they get caught behind the Aston Martins late on in this race and some something happens between any of them. But yeah, for us at the moment, though. Looks like it might be F1's most annoying position, that being P11 there, unless Sonoda, who is still looking feisty behind us, can wriggle his way by. Ah, there we go. Sonoda's going to sneak by. That was not fun. It's got a little bit loose over the curb and on the exit there, and you just go wide, and there's nothing you can do. So it might now watch Sonoda sail off into the sunset in the final few laps here. But yeah, again, like I said early on, just didn't quite seem to have the pace this weekend. These higher downfall circuits are not happy hunting grounds for this car, but Monza next. Well, heading on then to the final lap of the Dutch Grand Prix, and there have been questions raised over recent Grand Prix about whether Hamilton 
might be starting to let this title slip away this weekend. This Nothing lap, of the sort. Of the race. Hamilton has absolutely dominated this one. Pole by half a second around, yeah, one minute lap track is kind of ridiculous as well. There is basically led from start to finish. In fact, I think he might have led every lap of this Grand Prix. Uh, with the exception of just a couple of laps over the pit window. Hamilton wins the Dutch Grand Prix fastest lap as well. Right at the very end there. And he's going to further extend his title lead to the rest of the field after a ropey Belgian Grand Prix there. For us though, it's not been the most action-packed Grand Prix. Of course, we had the controversy at the start between Gio and Esteban Ocon there. I think Ocon might have actually been a car that we could have battled with this weekend. Obviously, Giovinazzi though still in that much, much slower round for a Mayo there. You can see Lungard in P14. 33 seconds back there, half a lap pretty much around this track. And Sonoda, 10 seconds in front there, Alonso 15. So we really were in a bit of no man's land this weekend between myself and Schwarzman there. And P12 and P13 isn't a bad result by any stretch, but it's still just a little bit frustrating, you know, when you want to believe points are on the table week in, week out there. But a good recovery. We learned a lot as well. And far more importantly, we have survived the Dutch Grand Prix here on F1 2021. There it's P12 at the end of the day. We'll take it. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. The Mercedes team pulled out a fantastic performance today. They should be proud. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? Well, I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on the track was today, speed. I know it sounds like an obvious thing to say, Crofty, but fast cars win races. And we saw that today with our winner. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. It's a great result for Lewis Hamilton, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. Now, let's discuss, Ant, who would you say is a contender for Driver of the Day? Yuki Tsunoda gets my vote today. It's time to check out the Constructors' standings. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. Well, there we are then, guys, the end of the Dutch Grand Prix. And Hamilton, what can we say? Ball position, fastest lap race victory. He's back. 22nd race win there ahead of homeboy Max Verstappen there. I'm sure he's happy uh, to be on the podium at the first Dutch Grand Prix. Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo, third and fourth. At the end of the day, they're another good, consistent result by McLaren, who further take, well, only the one point out of Mercedes this weekend there. But that battle is going to rage on right the way through to the end of the year there. Sainz and Charles Leclerc. 5th and 6th ahead of the Aston Martins of Stroll and Russell, 7th and 8th. Gasly and Alonso round out your point scorers there. And then you've got Yuki Tsunoda, driver of the day, when he didn't even score points in Mercedes. Not too sure how he managed that. Ooh, and my, excuse me. Uh, we went, though, 17th to 12th ahead of Schwarzman. Lungard, 22nd to 14th. There was a pretty good job done by him ahead of Guan Yu Zhou there. And you can see you got both Williams, Schumacher, Perez, who had a... Oh, of course, he retired, didn't he, late on. A one of four retirements there. At the end of the Grand Prix as well. Then uh, Nikita Mazpin, Ocon and Giovinazzi joined him on the sidelines. Championship-wise, though, Hamilton 64 still clear at the top. Lando and Ricardo now tied for P2. Three points ahead of Max Verstappen in at P4 there. So that's certainly going to be a battle to watch out for to the end of the year there. Charles Leclerc ahead of Sainz, who once again re-jumps Sonoda. We're now just two points ahead of Lance Stroll, though, at this stage of the year. But no other movers further down the roster. Uh, Constructors-wise, though, yeah, the gap at the top down by an extra point. Brings it to 19 with a handful of races left to go of the year there. Ferrari still did a fine P3 ahead of Red Bull there. And they got Aston Martin ahead of ourselves. Doesn't look like realistically there's going to be much movement further down the order there. Really, I think the battles to watch out for are at the top. And then Alpha Tauri and Alpine as well. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed. And yeah, we will hopefully be back tomorrow ready for the Italian Grand Prix. It's going to be a good track for us. You guys do not want to miss it.
None of these videos would be possible without the support of our channel members. So a massive thank you to the Travesty, Patrick, Chuan, David Bennett, Ben Meekins, and Aiden C97 for becoming channel members. If you want to be featured in these little um, clips, click the join button down below.